So basically on the unit circle, you can transpose um, a triangle within it, okay? And you know that this is 1, you know that this is x, you know that this is y. So what formula could we use to represent the ratio of x, y, and 1 in a triangle? x squared plus b squared equals c squared, which would be in this case x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, or x squared plus y squared equals 1. So any point on the unit circle works in that formula. So if you know x, you could solve for y. If you knew y, you could solve for x because it has to fit into that formula in order to be on the unit circle. So if ever they say on the unit circle, they are indirectly telling you to use this formula. So they could give you just an x or give you just a y and you'd be able to solve for the other one. Okay? We did the unit circle, we formed the unit circle, we have the unit circle already. Correct? We've drawn it. So, I'm going to give you one. Okay, so we want to state the coordinates of intersection of the terminal arm and the unit circle of the following. So P of pi over 2 just wants the point at pi over 2. So now that you have your unit circle drawn, it's really easy. Go to pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90. What's your point? It's at 0 and 1. Positive 1. Yeah? Ah, yes. Negative 3 pi. So negative 3 pi, you're going to draw it. Starts here. And it lands here. Now, if you're someone who's not quite sure, you could just find the coterminal of it, right? Because the coterminal angle is going to land on the exact same terminal arm, right? So the point is going to be, the coordinates can be the exact same. So you could go negative 2 pi, or sorry, 3, that's a 3. Negative 3 pi plus 2 pi is what? Pi. And pi is on your unit circle, correct? So what's the coordinate at pi? Negative 1 and 0. 7 pi over 2, is that anywhere on there? No? So how could we figure out where, what it would be? You can convert it to degrees. Most of you are going to. So 7 pi over 2 times 180 over pi is what? How much? 630? Is 630 on our unit circle? No. So what are we going to do? 630 minus 360. And what do we get? Is that on your unit circle? Yes, what's its coordinate? 720 degrees. I like this, this Y is so stupid. 720 degrees. It's the same as 360, right? And what's the coordinates of 360? This is important. Principal angle is the smallest positive angle between 0 and 360 degrees because of the y's? Yep. Equal sign. Okay. Use the angle above information to determine the coordinates on the unit circle. So we have 60 degrees. Is that on the unit circle? So the point at 60 degrees is what? One half of root 3 over 2. So a lot of people don't want to draw out the unit circle. But if you draw out the unit circle, these questions are extremely fast, are they not? 7 pi over 6, is that on the unit circle? What is it? So it's the same as 210, and what's its coordinate? Two hundred and forty degrees. 
Hmm? Oh, yeah. Is there in quadrant three? 240 degrees? What's it? And then 120 degrees? Negative? Yeah. So those are directly off. Negative 5 pi over 3, is that on the unit circle? Negative? No. But 5 pi over 3 is. What's 5 pi over 3 in degrees to help you out? 300. So this is negative 300 degrees, which is actually what? Positive 60, is it not? How did I get that? 360. So they land on the same terminal arm, correct? And 60 has a coordinate at what? Nineteen pi over six. Anyone know where that is? I don't even know where that is. So you could subtract two pi, subtract two pi, subtract two pi until you get it on there. Keep it in radians, or you could convert it to degrees, which is about. Even if I want you to keep it in radians, you're going to convert it because I know you. What is it in degrees? Five seventy. Is that a principal angle? No, so if I subtract 360, I get 210. Is that on the unit circle? Yeah, what's it at? And negative 3 pi lands on pi. I did it already, it's up there. Negative 1 and 0. And flip over if you have them printed. <clears throat> okay. You guys write the answers to these. Shouldn't take you long. Pi over 2 is at 90, 0 and 1. 2 pi is at 360. So 1 and 0. 2 pi over 3 is negative a half root 3 over 2. 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2, negative, no. Yes. Negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. Negative pi over 4 is the same as positive 315, right? So it is going to be a positive x and a negative y, 45 degree reference angle. 23 pi over 6. How much is it? Minus 360, same as 330. So it's going to be a half and negative root 3 over 2. Okay. Yeah, it's a 30 degree reference angle, not a 60. Happens when you do unit circles in your head. It's a little bit of an issue. Okay, so before we were given an uh, angle in radian or degrees, asked for the point. Now we're given the point and we're asked for the angle in radians or degrees. But in this case, it actually has to be in radians. So you have to check your domain. If your domain is in radians, your answer has to be in radians, and we have to compare or pay close attention here. It can be equal to 0, but it can't be equal to 2 pi. So if it's on this arm over here, um, say it was 1, 0. They gave me the coordinate 1, 0. 1, 0 is here. That was actually pretty good. 
We're very fast track. I'm impressed with myself. Um, so zero would be an answer, but two pi would not be an answer for one zero because my domain doesn't include it. Okay, and why would they give a restricted domain? To limit answers because there's an infinite number of degrees and radian measure that land on there, right? Coterminal, coterminal, coterminal this way, or coterminal, coterminal, coterminal this way. So them giving you, you a domain actually makes your life better. You don't have to do a general solution, which we will have to do later. So here are your coordinates, okay? I want you to give me the angles. And don't worry about the little unit circle at the bottom of your page. On our unit circle, we always rationalize denominators. 1 over root 2, if you rationalize the denominator, that means take the radical out. You'd multiply by root 2 and root 2, what you do the top, you have to do the bottom. So 1 times root 2 is root 2. And what's root 2 times root 2? When you multiply square roots, you multiply um, the numbers in front by each other and the numbers under the radicals by each other. So numbers in front, coefficients, and the radicands. So root 2 times root 2 is actually root 4, which is just... 2. And remember you were taught that if you multiply two radicals that were the same together, you just get that answer without the root sign. The reason why is root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So root anything times root anything that's the same gets you that same thing squared. So if I had, for example, root a times root a, it would get me root a squared, would it not? What happens to the squared and the square root signs? They cancel. So root 2 times root 2 is actually root 2 squared. Those cancel and my answer is just 2. So 1 over root 2 is the same as saying what? Negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Okay? Grab your solution. Negative 1, 0 is here. So what's there? Pi, right? Root 3 over 2 and a half is pi over because it's 30 degrees. Uh, negative root 2 over and root 2 over 2 is going to be in quadrant 2 because it's a negative x positive y and it's a 45. So it's going to be 3 pi over 4. And then this one is in the third quadrant because it starts with a half, it's actually a 60 degree reference angle which is 240 which is 4 pi over 3. We're going to leave that for now. No our answers. Go to the next one. Okay. This says, determine the missing y coordinate for each point on the unit circle. What did I tell you to remember if it says on the unit circle? What's it telling you? x squared plus y squared equals y. Just like when it said is a factor, we had to remember that the remainder was 0. It says on the unit circle, you need to remember that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay? So we'll look at a first. That's your x. So negative 5 over 4 squared plus y squared equals 1. Negative 4 squared over 5 squared is negative 4 squared, which is 16, over 5 squared, which is 25, plus y squared equals 1. I'm going to subtract my 16 over 25 on both sides. And I'm going to get y squared equals, I need to change the 1 into 25 over 25, so I get a common denominator. 25 over 25 minus 16 over 25. y squared equals 9 over 25. And I have to take the square root. When I take the square root, I need to remember what signs in front. Positive or negative. So I'm going to get y equals plus or minus 3 over 5. How do we know which one? If it doesn't specify the quadrant, it's both, right? 
If it doesn't specify the quadrant, I have a point at negative 4, 5, and 3, 5. And I have a point at negative 4, 5, and negative 3, 5. And they would both work, except it says quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, your x is negative and your y is What's this one? You do B. So we're going to get 3 over 10 squared minus y squared equals 1. 9 over 100 minus y squared equals 1. Uh, plus, I don't know, I have a minus. y squared equals 100 over 100, which is 1. Minus 9 over 100, so we get common denominator. y squared equals 81 over 100, square root. Oh, really? 81 would have been so much cooler. Perfect square. But yet, it's not. 91 makes life not nearly as awesome. Now, we can get plus or minus square root 91. You were also taught this in grade 10. If you have square root 91 over 100, in grade 10 you were taught you could split them. Square root 91 over square root 100. And the only reason why you would do that is if one of the numbers was actually a perfect square. So 100 is. So we get square root 91 over square root 100, which is 10. Now, because we're in quadrant 4, y has to be negative. So it's negative root 91 over 100, or over 10, sorry. Now, this one says, is each point on the unit circle? On the unit circle. What's it asking you to do? x squared plus y squared equals 1, and see if x squared plus y squared equals 1. Is that true? No. Some people would be like, well, I'm going to round it. No. I don't know. No. I like your, like your drive to make them be, both be one. It's still not true. So no. Is it really close? Super duper close, but it's not one. OK? So I'll tell you to check it. These things look the same as what we did here. I'm going to look through and downsize it a tiny bit because it's even stressing me out looking at all those numbers, and I don't have to do it. Page one eighty. We're going to read 2 C F. Uh, 3 C E F. Or F H. If you don't think I'm downsizing it, it is past H. And I told you to do odd letters, which I know that's an odd letter, but A, C, D, 
E I C downsizing. No, nah, that's boring. No one cares about that one. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. That's massively downsized. 